Today, I would like to share how to consider accommodations and accessibility measures for post-secondary students who have one or two cochlear implants, but also include the population of students who are going through the assessment um, process as well. Today, I'd like to discuss three main areas. First, I'll provide a general introduction to cochlear implants. Next, I'll discuss academic accommodations for this population, as well as assistive technology recommendations. And finally, I will share some communication strategies and additional resources. A cochlear implant is a surgically implanted device that provides enhanced sound perception for those with a significant hearing loss who no longer find benefit from a hearing aid. The cochlear implant consists of two main parts, an external device called a processor. This includes a coil, a cable, and a processor and a power source. An internal device, which is surgically implanted, is called a receiver. This includes a stimulator, an electrode array, which is fed through the hearing organ, or cochlea. In the top right-hand corner of this slide, you will see the electrode array being fed through the cochlea. And from left to right, you see the array going deeper and deeper. Then the electrical impulses travel to the brain through the auditory nerve. How is a cochlear implant different from a hearing aid? Well, I think obviously um, a cochlear implant is a surgically implanted device, whereas a hearing aid is worn externally and there is no surgical process involved. Nothing can be heard through the processor of a cochlear implant, but with a hearing aid, you may be able to hear some squealing or echoing when you pick it up and listen to it. With a cochlear implant, there is a portion that attaches to a magnet, and there can be some precautions that are required um, after the implantation of the magnet. With a cochlear implant, most individuals will lose their residual or leftover hearing on the implanted side. There is a very strict criteria with uh, the cochlear implants, therefore the assessment and testing process and um, candidacy criteria is very strict. A hearing aid provider can be found in an abundance of clinics whereas a cochlear implant provider um, will likely be at a public health unit and also have a special designation. As such, in British Columbia, St. Paul's Hospital is the sole provider for adult cochlear implant services for British Columbia and the Yukon. Who is a candidate for a cochlear implant? Well, the individual must have a primarily sensory neural hearing loss as a, of a significant degree and testing must show limited benefit with a hearing aid or two hearing aids. The onset of hearing loss and previous experience of sound is important to consider so that once implanted, the ear is able to identify speech and make sense of it. In order to successfully perform the surgery, there needs to be imaging of the cochlea or hearing organ to make sure that it's fully developed and of a certain structure. The individual must be healthy enough to and able to undergo a surgical procedure. Please note, this is a very general list and for more specific criteria, please do visit the St. Paul's Hospital Cochlear Implant Program website. What is involved in the process to get a cochlear implant? Well, uh, this slide shows you that there is a lot involved. Um, just generally appointments to the hearing healthcare professional, even just to apply for a cochlear implant assessment. Uh, there needs to be paperwork completed. During the cochlear implant assessment, it is a full day of testing. You also, if approved for a cochlear implant, have a day of surgery, recovery time. 
You also have an appointment to activate the cochlear implant and follow up appointments for fine tuning or mapping. An ongoing practice uh, by the recipient, um, a lot of listening tasks to help improve your, um, your hearing and abilities through the cochlear implant. And ongoing maintenance with um, more um, fine tuning appointments over time and maintenance of equipment and upgrades. Some of these appointments are with specialists who have very limited appointment availability. Students may be absent or require time off from class in order to attend these appointments. Exemptions or participation considerations may be required, especially if they are being implanted during the academic term. What does a cochlear implant sound like? The answer to this is going to vary from person to person and the outcome of the surgery can depend on several factors. Some users are able to use the telephone again after lots of practice. Some users find that due to the difference in sound, music does not sound the same. This could impact a student's program choice. For many, situations in background noise will continue to be challenging. Now let's talk about accommodations. It's important to remember that each student should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis as each of their communication abilities will vary. There's a lot to consider and prepare for for the start of classes for this population. Therefore, priority registration could be beneficial. This provides the best outcomes for understanding the professor's voice. Um, this could be due to accent or the individual may hear male voices better than female voices. Priority registration also allows the student to determine the time of class or the time of that particular block, um, which would be best for them. Perhaps they want an early morning class um, instead of a class at the end of the day to prevent listening for fatigue. They also may choose to have um, a preferential seating in the classroom. Um, so in the first few rows of uh, class, closer to the professor. Caption materials can also be helpful. Once the student receives the syllabus, they should be looking for any media clips or audio clips that are played and inform the accessibility office that they would like those materials captioned. It's really helpful to have lecture notes in advance. This allows the student to become familiar with certain words and terms and themes that will be um, discussed during the lecture, as well for the sign language interpreter to look at the notes and, and be familiar with some of these themes and terms as well. The student may benefit from a reduced course load. If the student does have a cochlear implant um, uh, procedure, surgery, activation in the middle of the term, they may need a reduced course load um, or have a medical leave or a gradual return to class. The student may require a sign language interpreter if they are fluent in sign language. They also may request that they no longer require their sign language interpreter after the cochlear implant is activated. Again, this is a case by case basis and a discussion with the student in their changing needs as they may vary is important. The student may also require transcription um, or um, decide that they no longer require transcription pre post implant activation, um, they may require a note taker as well. And some of these services and service providers and equipment and accommodations, um, they may decide that they're okay without them and then suddenly learn that they actually still need them. 
Appendix 8 revising, um, should the student uh, previously have worn a hearing aid on that side and connect to their FM system um, through their hearing aid and now have a cochlear implant and require different um, FM receivers uh, in order to connect to their FM transmitter, um, they could um, be requesting some um, alternate equipment for their new um, hearing system. There are some exam accommodations that can be done. Um, extended exam time for those students who require it an alternate exam location in a more quiet environment where they're able to be closer to the exam invigilator um, and away from any distracting noises or other students and also alternate exam format. If it is an oral exam, they may require additional formats. It's also important to remember that they may require support personnel for programs or co-ops that involve heavy machinery. This can be a safety issue. And um, just thinking outside the box, um, the student may require some alerting or signaling, signaling devices um, for a new dorm room or living spaces. And just to add that the priority registration can also assist the student to select um, a smaller class size. Um, so it would be more ideal for them to be in a class with 50 students instead of the same block that has um, 300 students in the class. The smaller class will um, change the room acoustics or even a, a newer auditorium versus a very old reverberant lecture hall can make a big difference. Connecting to assistive equipment. There are three main cochlear implant manufacturers in Canada, um, and these are all of the receiver units um, that go on to their cochlear implant models. These can all be paired with FM or DM um, transmitters of the FM system. The manufacturers are Cochlear, Advanced Bionics, and Medel. In British Columbia, successful candidates um, of a cochlear implant are given the choice of which implant manufacturer they would like. In general, consulting with the hearing healthcare professional of the student when looking for compatible devices or new uh, models may become available. Um, so this list is or slide is just to demonstrate that there are a lot of different ways that a student could connect a cochlear implant to an FM system. There are some reminders um, for this population and assistive equipment. The student may be wearing more than one manufacturer brand if they are bimodal. What I mean is um, they may have a hearing aid on one side and wear a cochlear implant on the other side. We refer to these two different modes of hearing as bimodal. So the manufacturers of each of these units are going to be different. Therefore, the student may have um, required different equipment accommodations or different equipment in order to get each of these devices to pair with the same FM transmitter. They may also have a few different apps on their phone that connect to their hearing aids. Um, so that can be a little bit of an adjustment if they were used to previously wearing two of the same brand hearing aids. Also, it's good to know that each of the cochlear implant manufacturers has a website and they have links to resources and videos on how to connect some of their technology. It's also important to remember that bimodal listening can be challenging for some, especially right after activation. Um, listening through a hearing aid and a cochlear implant could be very different. It's not, you're not comparing apples to apples. And so some students may really struggle with the um, bimodal, the new, the new change to listening bimodally.
And uh, I've said it once and I'll say it again, trial and error. So some services and supports that have been successful for the student in the past may change. Encourage the student to be proactive and communicate with the accessibility office to coordinate their accommodations. And you may have to follow up with these students if you start to see that they're becoming discouraged um, or some accommodations are not working for them. Um, see what you can do to assist them. These needs may change. So once you have their supports and equipment and service providers set up, over time, over the course of, of um, a degree or program, their needs may change. And so checking in with them and um, just letting them know about all the different service providers and accommodations that are available would be helpful because they may not previously know about these services. Some general communication strategies that I can share include um, sending the student uh, the kind of um, rough agenda or um, uh, what you would like to cover during your appointment with them ahead of time. This could be very helpful for them to make their own notes or to stay on track during the appointment. Um, Generally, it is known that speaking 10% louder and 10% slower um, to individuals with hearing loss can lead to a more effective um, communication. And um, the student could also ask if they could use a dictation app, such as Live Transcribe, NAL Scribe, or Otter AI, which will transcribe your appointment into writing in real time so the student can follow along. Um, if the student uses an FM or DM system during classes, you may ask if, if they'd like you to wear it during the appointment, as well as if they have service providers during their courses. Um, you may be able to offer that as an accommodation during your appointment. Um, this will probably vary. Um, and after the appointment, uh, it would be um, appreciated if you sent a summary of your appointment um, through email to the student, um, just to kind of confirm up all of the different um, topics that were discussed. And last, um, if there is a service provider that um, provided service during the appointment um, and there's a transcript available, um, you could uh, provide the student with a copy of the transcript. For more information and resources, here are some links um, that can provide this. St. Paul's Hospital's Cochlear Implant Program is a wonderful program and a resource for information. Um, their website is listed here, and they also have a social worker on staff. Um, now, Advanced Bionics, Cochlear, and Medal are the three cochlear implant manufacturers. They also have their own websites, and as I said, with their own video resources. Okay. Some people may really, really want a cochlear implant, but be assessed and not be a candidate. This can be very frustrating and impact their identity, um, their feelings of inclusion, um, and their mental health. They may feel that they not, do not fit into a deaf world, but that they also don't fit into a hearing world either. Um, and also um, for some individuals who get a cochlear implant and they struggle kind of with some of the outcomes, um, there could be a number of reasons why a student may benefit from reaching out to the Deaf Wellbeing Program. They are a great resource and, um, and they are listed here at the Deaf Wellbeing Program or deafwellbeing.bch.ca. As always, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact ACEBC.